So I'm using Electrical Guitar Company guitars. It's the custom models. Um, I have uh, one regular custom guitar and then one bass guitar and then there's the baritone which is the one I'm using now with the new Aurobot setup where we're using what well, we have synthesis Karen's synthesizer bass it's the move bass kind of mixed with my with a with a bass side of my rig I've started using the baritone and I've actually uh, it's tuned in drop C I've tuned it to a drop C. And uh, these guitars, I've had these guitars for uh, quite some time. Um, I, I really enjoy these guitars. They have a obviously um, quite metallic sound and especially this baritone is quite uh, a one trick pony really. But that really suits my, my playing because I play incredibly simplistic. It's just, uh, you know, it's just basic power chords really and uh, it works really well for that so they, they are just like uh, they are just built perfectly for me and also I would have to say that I especially with this baritone it's got a bit of a thicker neck and it's quite heavy at, and I quite like that you know the, there's a physical aspect of it too so you know you're looking for the primordial note of that that tone, which is really some sort of bluesy rock and roll tone, really. Um, and then the physicality of, of playing it with thick strings and a, a really heavy guitar. So, you know, you, it's impossible to fall asleep while, while playing. I'm using Black Harbor strings. It's a company in Portland. And they have uh, this, this custom strings. I think it's 1260. Um, this set that I'm using here. Sometimes I'm using thicker too, but usually around 10 to 60 or 1260 is is perfect for what we do in Overbot. <laughs> I actually have a pedal board these days, which is which is uh, remarkable for a guitar player like me. Um, for years, I was using the full tone OCD only. So, Electrical Guitar Company guitars going into the full tone OCD, and then straight into the high watt. And uh, the OCD is great because it kind of sharp and metallic sound of the electrical guitar company guitars are they it, it really is perfect with this sort of uh, I guess they call it creamy that sound it's just a smooth overdrive and I really like that you know if you play soft then it responds to it and, and if you play hard on your strings it's really, really responsive um, and um, I love that pedal and it, that, that's the backbone of the of the Aurobot sound, really. And I tend to not fiddle around too much with it. So basically it's just, you know, keeping it quite open and then some drive, depending on room and volume. Um, but now with the new setup for Aurobot with uh, Karin doing her synthesizer bits and me on the baritone guitar, I am ABing the it's the guitar part of the setup of the rig, and then there's a bass part of the rig. And uh, for the bass part, I'm using this electro harmonics octave thing. Um, literally not using it out of the hole, just keeping it on. But it adds a little bit of of boost to the bass line. expanded it a bit. Um, I'm never really using any reverb, uh, at least live in the studio, some reverb, but I've, we've experimented it a little bit about with it. 
but I, I I usually just use a really direct sound. Um, but I, I did get the Super Ego also, Electro Harmonics. It says Synth Engine. It's a fun little thing. I don't go too crazy about it. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can freeze the notes. You can add layers of, of tones, but I really just use it as some sort of reverb effect for some specific parts in the set. So it, it provides a sort of Verby sounds. Um, which we need for some of the new songs from Norwegian Gothic, our new album. Um, there's also a few songs that where I need even more fuzz, so it's, you know, get some more really hairy balls basically. Recently I'm using the Hudson Broadcast, which is great for just that. Interesting, which has this uh, this filling, which provides some uh, incredibly high voltage distortion tones. Yeah, it's a good good one. But that's it. Keeping it simple. So most of these amps are vintage amps. Um, this one is newer. I would say that they are different but equally good. So I wouldn't say that vintage amps is, you know, high-watt amps is what you should go for. The tonality is a bit different, but the, the new ones are brilliant too. And also there's a mix of newer cabinets with the vintage ones. Uh, and also I'm using a mix of the Fane speakers and the Celestians. And for all of us, yeah, the Celestians are actually maybe even... It works better. It's less um, retro sounding. Um, there's four tens in each of these ones in the top half and there's a 15 inch speaker in the bottom. So two 15 and eight tens and then there's a four 12s here. All of four, four cabinets. And yeah, these they're all tube amps. They've actually been on fire. Um, a couple of times. Fortunately never live, even though that would be good for job business. It was in a re rehearsal room one time, uh, it was really early on when we did our first record and we used to rehearse in this old brewery in Oslo, Norway, and uh, I guess it was dodgy electricity. And I just turned around and the whole amp was burning. Uh, the second time was here in the church, and uh, this guy burned, and that was that was my mistake. Really, we had to do the show in London. I had to fly back with it, and uh, really didn't work out too well. Tube malfunction. So um, yeah, they had to be repaired, and they changed. I guess, I guess it sits fire in the socket of the tube, and then they've changed it now to these porcelain sockets. So. Now it works, so we'll see next time they, they all burn. Maybe the whole church will burn at the same time. 